Hey, it's Dave here coming at you with another tutorial in Affinity Photo for iPad. Today we're going to be creating this movie poster inside of Affinity Photo using a text clipping mask and a variety of other adjustments to get this style and look. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new document. And most movie posters are 24 by 36, so we'll go ahead and go to print. We'll change this to inches. And again, 24 uh, by 36. Perfect. Now, if you really were going to print this, I would recommend you leave it at 300 DPI or at least some somewhere over 200. But for this purpose, I'm going to take it down to 150 just for file size reasons since I know I'm not going to print this. And here we go. So you may have your image of the Joker that you want to use for this specific uh, example. However, Affinity Photo has this cool uh, stock image option. And uh, what I did originally was I came in here and typed the word actor to try to find some inspiration. And this image right here of the actor in Joker makeup caught my eye and really acted as the inspiration for this design. So if I click and drag this out, uh, maybe just like that. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is just size this up so that his face takes up most of the image. Perfect. This is subjective, so you get to decide how much of the hair, etc. you want, but I, I do want it to fill most of the image. So we'll go with that. Since I know I'm not going to need any of the additional space outside, I can come up here and just select Rasterize and Trim, and it will eliminate and get rid of all of the other parts of the image. This can be uh, particularly valuable when you've got a lot of layers and you're trying to uh, keep the size of your document somewhat under control. All right, great. So the first thing I notice about this image is he's got these really intense eyes, uh, but for me, I want those to be green. So I can do that using a adjustment layer and it is called HSL. So I'll go ahead and select that. And really what this allows you to do is change the hue of existing colors. So if I move this over, and you take a look at his eyes, you can see I'm moving his eyes towards green, which is exactly what I want. Now, what I don't want is the rest of the image to be impacted by this. So if I come back to the layers, you can see all adjustment layers come with their own mask. So what I'll do is I'll select the fill tool. I'll make sure I have black selected. And with the HSL layer selected, I'll just click on the screen. It'll fill it with a black mask, which means it hides everything. And then all I have to do is come back in with the paintbrush tool, pick a paintbrush size, and just paint the eyes back in using white. And as you can see, as I do that, the eyes turn back to that green, which is exactly what I want. And same thing over here, perfect. Now that I have it painted in, if I double click on the HSL adjustment, I can come back to ranges and I can tweak the green to get the color green that I want. So. I can desaturate, I can oversaturate, you know, whatever you feel like you want to do, you can always come back and change it so you're not stuck on that. Now that I've uh, changed his eye colors to green, I also could, if I wanted to, apply a similar green to his hair. His hair was already this sort of yellow green, but again, if I just take my paintbrush and I start painting over the hair, you can see it's now changing it to green. Now. This isn't really going to be super noticeable once I clip it inside of the text mask. But just demonstrating that if I wanted to, I could change that to green. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I want to apply a texture. So you can find textures all over the internet for free and paid. So. Uh, for me, I'm going for uh, some sort of dark, grungy green color. Um, so again, up to you. But if you come up here, I'm going to hit Place from Cloud. And uh, this allows me to go and select my texture. 
once it tells me to drag to place my image, I just come up here and click on the top left corner of my image and drag it out. Perfect, just like that. And uh, got this from Ivan Weiss from a demo he did a couple of weeks ago. Come up here. And what I want to do now is I really only want this texture to impact the dark parts of the image. So I can come over here to this blend on destination and just pull this down like that. And as you can see, if I zoom in, the texture is only impacting the dark part of the image and the highlights are not being impacted, which is exactly what I want. And uh, next I'm gonna go ahead and change the blend mode to either multiply or color burn. I really like the intensity of color burn. I'm gonna keep it there. A little too intense though, so I can just lower the opacity somewhere around 60-ish. If I come back and turn this off and on, you can see it really adds a cool, a cool look. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a LUT on top of that. So LUT stands for lookup tables, and essentially these are uh, different sort of colors that you can apply to an image. There are hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of LUTs on the internet for free. There are some you can purchase. Traditionally, as you start to collect and download LUTs, you'll find some are certainly uh, better than others, and you tend to get sort of a small group that you use over and over again. So for this one, I know that I want to try to find something that's a bit contrasty and has a green tint to it. You certainly can go with whatever look you want, and that's what's cool about using LUTs is you can make your specific image look and feel different than others. So again, coming back into adjustments, clicking on LUT, I'm gonna go ahead and load it. And again, there's tons of them. You know, you can come in and um, select all kinds. So if I wanted to just, you know, come in here and click maybe Union, Uh, you can see that's a very sort of purple intense look. I can lower the opacity. Um, so again, whatever whatever look you want. You can also stack LUTs. Some people do that, so you can start adding LUT after LUT. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, but for me, again, I'm going for sort of a green grungy look. And this is the LUT I'm going to use. And you can see at full intensity, eh, you know, a bit too much. I'm going to pull that back, something right about there. And again... If I turn that off and on, it just gives it that green hue, which I like. Great. Now that I've got these applied, uh, I want to add a bit more brightness to uh, the image. It got a little too dark for me, so I'm going to go ahead and, and add an exposure adjustment. And I'm just going to up the exposure somewhere right around there. Perfect. And again, before and after, it just gives it a bit more pop. And ultimately, this is what the before and after, so this is the image we brought out from the stock images. And then as we applied our adjustments, we got this very green, you know, joker, I guess, cinematic look. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and group these, just like that. And we're now gonna go ahead and bring in our text. So I'll go ahead and click and drag, and we'll type in Joker, just like this. And to make it easier for you guys to see, we will change this to white. And uh, again, there are many, many hundreds and thousands of fonts on the internet, both for free and paid. Uh, but I would recommend anytime you're going to do a clipping mask that you pick a wide, thick font for today. I'm going to be using a font called Stargaze. Just like that, perfect. And I'm going to center align it. And we'll go ahead and start to increase it. Now if I come under to character, I am going to uh, decrease the letting to bring the text closer together. And then I will increase the size. I'm also going to increase the horizontal scale, making the text a bit wider, something like that. Perfect. And then I'll bring the text a bit up. Now, you can do this once you've done the clip, but if you think ahead, what's going to come through the text is anywhere that there's white, you're going to see the image. 
And so for me, the eyes are what really grab this image. So I want to make sure that this K is over the eyes so that his eye comes through. And again, we can adjust the image once we have the text in there. The other thing that's sticking out to me here, and again, this is happens depending on the font you use, but visually I feel like this E, K, and R seem closer together than the O and the J. Technically it may not, but visually it does feel that way to me. So I'm just going to come in to this O and I'm going to adjust the baseline down to bring it closer to the K. And then the same thing for the J, I'm going to bring it down. And to me, that feels a bit better. I can now bring the text, put it back. And I think we're ready. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this group. We're going to click and drag it to the middle of the text. And we've now clipped the group inside of the text. Now obviously we do not want this white background, so we're going to go ahead and add a pixel layer. We'll drag the pixel layer below and we will fill it with black. There we go, perfect. So it's looking good so far. Now we want the text to, to stand out a bit behind the black background, so we're going to, with the text layer selected, we're going to go ahead into effects and add an outline. And I'm going to do an inside, and we're going to select sort of a gold color, and we'll go ahead and increase the radius to, you know, whatever feels good to you, 6, 7. I sort of just want it to make the text pop a bit. So again, your artistic preference, whatever you want, I'll go with something like that. Perfect. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want to add this sort of purple glow behind the text. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to duplicate this layer. Now because I have the joker clipped inside of this text, when I duplicate it, it's also going to duplicate that group, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and delete it. So I'll click duplicate. I'll open this up. I'll delete this so that all I have is the text. Now what I'm going to do is come into effects, get rid of the outline, and we're going to do an outer glow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the fill opacity so that all I'm seeing is the effect and not the actual fill of the text. I'll come in here, we'll pick like a yellow, and I'll start increasing the radius of this glow just like this. And I'll bring the opacity way down. I want it to be subtle. Uh, and again, I can play around with maybe a darker purple just like that. Perfect. All right, it's coming along well. Okay, so now that we are done with that, what we're going to do is add some supplemental text. Now, the first thing I see here is it's sort of off-centered, so I am gonna go ahead and uh, just select both layers and just sort of reposition it somewhere in the middle, just like that, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add text layer, and we're gonna go ahead and type in ha. Huh? So you guys can see it, we'll change it to white, perfect. And uh, for this text, I am going to use um, something called Rise and Shine. Perfect, just like that. And I'm gonna bring the horizontal scale back down to 100%, perfect. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna replicate this two more times with the text getting smaller and smaller. So if I hold two fingers on the screen, click and drag, it will duplicate it. I'll go ahead and shrink this down. And then two fingers, click, drag, and shrink that down. Perfect. And now that I have those three, I can go ahead and group those. And I'll go ahead and turn them just like this. And then two fingers, click, drag, bring that down. Two fingers, click, drag, maybe bring this up, maybe change this a bit like that. Perfect. And this is where, again, you can play around on positioning, however you think it makes sense. And then once I have those three, I'll group those. And two fingers, click, hold, bring it over. Again, I'll turn them this way. Maybe size them up a bit different. Perfect. All right, and then I will go ahead and group those. 
And uh, now that that's all grouped, I'm going to bring this opacity way down, something like that. Perfect. All right, we are almost done. So now we've got the main design done. I'm going to add some movie poster credits at the bottom. So I will go ahead and group all of those. And with my selection, I'll just make this a bit smaller so that there's some room at the bottom. Now for movie poster credits, you can get those on the internet. Again, Google search, you can buy them from a stock place. Uh, I have some ready to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste those in right now. All right, now that I have this selected, I'll select here. I'll go pasteboard. I'm gonna paste. We'll bring this down here, increase the size. Just like that, perfect. All right, so there you have it. We are done with the movie poster. I'm gonna show you one more thing Sometimes when you're doing these designs, you might be doing them for a client and you may want to give them different versions or styles for them to pick from. So I'm going to show you how to do this in a way that allows you to snapshot it and look at it later. So we'll go ahead and duplicate this whole section. And what we're going to do is change the text. So let's come in here. And let's say, rather than using this stargaze, I've decided I want to do this Hollywood Hills. Now, obviously, uh, this we need to come in and change uh, our baseline back to zero because uh, we duplicated the text. And you'll need to customize this. And again, I don't... Um, I won't spend too much time doing this, uh, since I already showed you how to do it. But again, you know, for me, obviously, I would be bringing this O down a bit. And same thing with this R. Perfect. Um, and then we'll sort of increase the horizontal scale. And, you know, you may want to pop in and change uh, the outline thickness. But essentially, there we have it. We've got this different style uh, again. So there's that and there's this. So if you wanted to show different textiles. Now down here you have your history and what this has been doing is tracking all of the actions you've been doing. But if you click down here on snapshot, you can actually create your own snapshots. So let's go ahead and do that. So first we're gonna start with this design. We'll go into our snapshot and click add. Then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna turn off the ha 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 to get a cleaner look. We'll add that snapshot. Now we'll get rid of that layer altogether and bring this one in. This was our original design. We'll go ahead and add that as a snapshot. And then similarly, we'll unhide the ha ha ha, add that as a snapshot. So now we have our four snapshots. So if I just wanna come back here and revert, I've got that version, we've got that version, that version, and that version very quick and easy way to go from different styles to either show clients and or I can revert to these, export them just by doing that. So I have four different exports that I might wanna send via email. So there you have it, the Joker poster. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please uh, subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks.